good job. It's your boy Ross back at it again with another video. So we're gonna check out Undefeated Wrestling's Greatest Streaks, man. I will say this. It's always cool when you are able to witness a a, a legendary wrestling streak. Yes, some can say, well, the streak is not really real because it's predetermined, but it, it still works in the sense of the booking of the streak. Uh, I know a lot of people be kind of questioning my disdain for Goldberg. I want people to understand. Growing up as a kid, even though I primarily watched WWF at the time, I didn't know who Goldberg was, and I did love that he did have a streak, and I always wanted to know how things would have played out if he ever went to WWE. We found out later on. But I always cherished his streak. I always thought it was something cool to have in wrestling. They just build. That was his gimmick. Who, how, who, you know, how many, how fast Goldberg was going to finish somebody. Or, for for example, the Undertaker streak. The Undertaker's uh, WrestleMania streak. I remember a time when it wasn't really talked about. It didn't get talked about to the later years. And it became its own thing. As in, people would go to WrestleMania just to see if someone's going to actually beat the streak you know so it, it streaks in wrestling can work it's very difficult to make it work for example right now roman reigns has been champion for over 600 plus days that's ridiculous as the universal champion some people are feeling like the championship is stale and other people are still somewhat enjoying it you know so it's all about the booking of these streaks you know and a lot of times it depending on if they have a title with the streak or if it's just a, a win-loss streak. It, it can either enhance the character, enhance like uh, the feuds they've been in to like legitimate, like give them that legitimate feel of this this guy is beating them all or this woman is beating them all. They've done it all. And when they finally actually lose, it can potentially help that next person. That's what it's supposed to do. So. We're going to check this one out, man. Wrestling with Andy. If you haven't already, go subscribe to him. It's going to be a good one. Sit back and relax. Let's get into this one. I'm looking forward to this video, man. When you break it down to its base parts, wrestling is nothing more than simple elemental storytelling. It's athletic theater, pantomime in a ring, a superhero mm -hmm. tale come to life. And when it comes to which stories it can tell, well, there have been a oh, I wasn't trying to stop it. few which have constantly worked over the decades. Take the good guy overcoming the odds, for example, yep. something which has gone well for the likes of Brian Danielson, Mick Foley, or Rey Mysterio in the past. And if that doesn't work, you could always try faction warfare, something which led to the rise of great feuds like the NWO versus WCW, DX versus the Nation of Domination, mm -hmm. or the Shield versus the Wyatt family. That said, Shield versus Wyatt family weren't very good for you, very good faction. Said, perhaps the easiest and most effective story of all to tell is the win streak, as whether it be a heel or a babyface, rookie or established performer, the simple act of racking up victories can turn any individual into a main event force quickly. Mm -hmm. So join us today then as we journey back to look at the best examples of this in Undefeated Wrestling's Greatest Streaks. Let's go into it, man. And if we're starting anywhere, we Gotta be may as Goldberg. well start with one of the most famous and fondly remembered streaks in all of wrestling history. Goldbergs. And that's the one carried out by Bill Goldberg. Yes, if you were a fan of wrestling in the late 90s, then you had two choices. You could be a WWF guy or a WCW guy. And, well, if you were the former, you were probably spending Monday nights watching the likes of Stone Cold Steve Austin and The Rock battle mm -hmm. it out on Raw. The latter group would instead be tuning in to Nitro, where come September of 1997, after the NWO story had hit its peak, a new star would have risen. And this star, a former roster member for both the Los Angeles Rams Damn, and the that's Atlanta a young Falcons, Goldberg would have a impact with wow. fans upon his debut when... After obliterating Hugh Morris, he'd begin a win streak that would see him gradually rise up the card over the course of the next year. And I'm not going to lie to you. It worked back then. Could you possibly pull this off now? Depending, it depends on the character and how people gravitate towards the character. But I enjoyed this. The few times I was watching WCW or the clips, like the highlights and when, when people were talking about it as a kid, I thought he was cool too. I was like, yo, he's like stone cold, but... Like, more jacked up and, like, you know, just more physically dominant. You know, it's like, I always wanted to see what if Stone Cold and, 
and and Goldberg got into a ring together. I always thought that was cool. So I enjoyed what they did with his streak. I thought it was one of the best things that ever happened in wrestling. So I just want to put this out there for people to think I always hated Goldberg. No, I just didn't like what they did with him when he came to WWE, like the third go around and how they booked him. I wasn't a big fan of that. But I've always respected what WCW did with Goldberg and what Goldberg has done for the industry as a whole. Racking up further victories against names such as Steve Mongo McMichael, Brad Armstrong, and Perry Saturn. And by the time he beat the latter of these, his streak would have reached 74-0, with fans now taking note of every victory he picked up on the house show circuit and mm -hmm. keeping track of it. That's so cool. So it only made sense then that... Having gone through just about everyone on the WCW undercard, the rookie would challenge Raven for the United States title on April 20th, 1998's episode of Nitro, there defeating him to win his first piece of gold. After that, he'd continue to beat everyone put in his path, going through the likes of Conan and Kurt Henning in quick squash matches, all mm -hmm. before then getting on the mic and asking the fans in attendance, who's next? Who's next? Yep. And ultimately, all those fans knew that sooner or later, it was going Hulk to be then WCW world champion Hollywood Hulk Hogan that would be next, with this match eventually coming on July 6th of that year inside of a sold-out Georgia Dome. But if anyone thought that the pressure was going to get Bill on that night, they were very wrong, as after hitting the... If you go watch this clip on YouTube, you can't tell me this doesn't give you goosebumps. Him winning and beating Hulk Hogan at this point. The crowd going crazy. Just just go watch it. It's on YouTube. Just go watch it. The Hulkster with a spear and a jackhammer, he pinned him to become the top guy in the company, as well as take his streak to 112-0. and 0. So vacating his United States title from there, the new champion would go on a string of successful world title defenses, with the most impressive of these probably being his match with Diamond Dallas Page at that October's Halloween Havoc. Then, with this undefeated streak now having reached 173-0, he'd face off against Kevin Nash at Starcade just two months later, there losing for the first time after Scott Hall got involved mm -hmm. and zapped him with a taser towards the end of the bout. And this would prove to be one of the worst decisions WCW could have made at that time as, mm -hmm. with interest in the product already dropping, beating Goldberg when fans still hadn't had enough of him only served to turn even more people off. Yep. In fact, Bobby Heenan would famously describe this moment as the point where the company killed its golden goose. Unsurprisingly then, WCW would be dead just three years later, and while Goldberg would eventually come to WWE it and have a run there in 2003, it wouldn't be until 2016 that Vince McMahon figured out how to best use the former WCW mm. champion when he brought him back and had him absolutely demolish Brock Lesnar. And this was fine. When he came back and he beat Brock, I was okay with it. The way it happened, It old school booking, the crowd was shocked, I was shocked. And it was cool. It worked. Then once he faced Kevin Owens for the Universal Championship and had Kevin Owens losing like two minutes, I'm like, ah, I ain't like that. I'm sorry. Kevin Owens deserved a better, at least a better match. I just didn't like that. I wasn't a big fan of it. And then after you, you know how it ended up, so we're not even going to go there. But like I said, I was very – Cool how this played out. Lesnar in under 90 seconds. And while his streak was long gone by this point, over on NXT, another star was mm. building up Oscar. one of her own, and that was Asuka. Oh, they, of course, this should come as no surprise. They built her up as upon great. her arrival in Vince McMahon's promotion in 2015, Asuka was fantastic. already widely recognized as being one of the greatest female performers of all time, with her having built up a name for herself in Japan as Kana in the decade prior. So using this to their advantage then, Triple H and his team of writers in NXT would have the Empress of Tomorrow start a win streak immediately upon hitting the ring mm -hmm. in the black and gold brand, with her first victory coming against Dana Brooke at October 7th's TakeOver Respect. After that, she'd continue to make short work of anyone else that yep. was thrown in her path, beating names like Cameron and Emma, all on the way to eventually getting a shot at Bayley's NXT Women's title at April 1st, 2016's TakeOver Dallas. And on that night, despite having the power of the full sail crowd behind her, it even Bailey would be unable to solve the puzzle of the Japanese star, as after just over 15 minutes, she'd pass out while locked in a submission, something which cemented Asuka as the queen of NXT going forward. 
But as mm -hmm. it happened, her run on the developmental show almost ended there as, impressed with what he was seeing from her, Vince McMahon allegedly wanted to call her up at this point. Reasoning, however, that the brand could not afford to lose her, Triple H was able to talk the boss out of this as, instead, the new NXT Women's Champion would stay down in Florida for the time. And that's so good that he did, bro. Triple H knew exactly what he was doing, why he was doing it, and keeping her down in NXT for a little bit longer definitely helped grow her stock. You cannot say it didn't. Bro, she was, no one could beat Asuka. Like, she, they built her up as a legit monster. When she came to the main roster, they even built her up even more, continuing her win streak to face Charlotte. And I still think they made the dumb decision and gave Charlotte the win at WrestleMania. I don't care what nobody says. Charlotte shouldn't have not beaten Asuka. She shouldn't. I'm not seeing it out there. And being, racking up successful title defenses against people such as Mickey James, Nikki Cross, and the Iconics. So dominating was she, in fact, that by February of 2017, she'd have become the longest reigning NXT Women's Champion of all time, mm -hmm. with it at this point only seeming like a matter of time before she was called up to the main roster. Yeah, but she before beat that everybody. call would come, Asuka would pick up more wins over stars like Ember Moon and Ruby Riot, eventually reaching a full 510 days as champion. After that, though, her reign would come to an end, not because she was defeated, she but because she was forced to title. vacate the belt as she was being moved up to Raw. And there, on the red brand, she'd continue to win, going through the likes of Alicia Fox and Alexa Bliss, all before winning the inaugural Women's Royal Rumble mm -hmm. match in January of... This, and this is another thing. She won the first ever Women's Royal Rumble match just to have her lose at WrestleMania in Charlotte. That d If you're gun You're building up this goldberg s woman no one has beaten her she hasn't been pinned charlotte could have easily maybe beaten her at some other point but wrestlemania should have been her moment that it, it irritates me off y'all can't tell 2018 following this oh. she faced her toughest challenge yet when she squared off against charlotte flair at wrestlemania 34 and in the end, this would prove to be her undoing, as on that night, it would be the Queen and who got the better of her, giving the Empress of Tomorrow her first defeat in WWE after 914 days. Uh, yes, it certainly was an impressive record and one that will be hard to top, but if current AEW star Jade Cargill has anything to say about okay. it, she'll be able to beat it before all is said and done. I didn't know she was on a win and streak of course, like that. It's in AEW's best interests to push Jade to the moon, as one of the biggest criticisms of the company since its inception in 2019 has been that aside from Britt Baker, yeah. the women's division hasn't really met expectations. Br yep. Thankfully, then, with the recent rise of mm -hmm. Thunder Rosa and the introduction of Ruby Soho and Tony Storm, it looks like this may finally be changing. But for as popular as these three are, none of them have the same level of star power as Jade Cargill, as despite only having her first official match in 2020, she's already come across like someone who's been doing it for years. Mm. Damn, I didn't maybe know that's that. because her first match saw her get thrown right into the main event spot as, on the November 11th episode of Dynamite that year, she'd team up with former basketball star Shaquille O'Neal to defeat the duo of Cody Rhodes and Red Velvet. And after scoring the winning pinfall that night, Jade would continue to rack up the victories from there, with her spending the next few months learning on the job as she made short work of names like Thunder Rosa. Then, on the January 5th, 2021 episode of Dynamite, she'd reach the next level when, after pinning Ruby Soho, she'd become the inaugural TBS champion. Which a championship is cool. she's continued to hold up to this day, following successful defenses against Anna Jay, Julia Hart, AQA, and Ty Conti. In fact, since her most recent oh, yeah, they defense do, over Marina... They do do like the little graphic of every time she beats someone. It's a new number. Jafir on the April 22nd episode of Rampage, she's taken her undefeated streak to 30 and 0. And with the introduction of a new faction around herself in the form oh, of the yeah. baddies, Red Velvet and Kira Hogan, it looks like she'll remain the champion for some time yet to mm -hmm. come. Of course, if she really wants to enter the record books, though, she'll still have a long way to go. Oh, yeah. Because back in the days of the WWF, one man was able to go for a full eight years without Bruno. losing his title, and that was the legendary Bruno Sammartino. That's right, before there was John Cena, before there was Steve Austin, before there was Hulk Hogan, Bruno was the face of the New York promotion, carrying it on his back as the hero of Italian-Americans everywhere mm -hmm. between 1963 and 1971. 
and during this period, after having first won the WWF world title from Nature Boy Buddy Rogers in April of the former year, he'd be able to go through absolutely everyone in his path, beating people such as Gorilla Monsoon, Pedro Morales, and George the Animal Steel. So dominating was he, in fact, that by the time it got to January of 1971, he'd successfully defended the belt a full 409 God times, damn! making it all the more shocking when, later that month at a Madison Square Garden show, he'd finally be pinned by Ivan Koloff in a moment so unexpected for the fans in attendance, many thought it had been a mistake. Wow. Luckily, though, they would soon get to see him with the belt again as, after taking a hiatus for the next year, Bruno would return to WWF in 1972 to start his second reign with the world title upon beating Stan Stasiak, with him this time going on to hold God it damn. for the next three years. And while by comparison this second undefeated run was far shorter, it's still infinitely longer than anyone else's in the modern day. But that wasn't to say others didn't try to match it in the years that followed, with one of the most often forgotten of these being Tatanka. Yes, well, few may remember it now. When Tatanka first debuted with WWF in 1991, the Native American was treated like a big deal, with mm. him spending his first couple of years on the roster going on something of a win streak. Well, we say win streak as, well, he hadn't lost by pinfall or submission on TV, picking up notable wins against the likes of Rick the Model Martel in the process. There was some massaging of the stats going on as he'd failed to win a number of house show encounters. Oh. That said, with this being the era where house shows weren't really followed that closely, TV audiences would be none the wiser. When yeah. his 1991 bled into 1992, Tatanka began challenging Shawn Michaels for the Intercontinental title. This, though, would not end with him winning the belt, as with management wanting to protect the Heartbreak Kid, too, the whole thing would lead to a number of double countout and DQ victories, each of which saw the heel keep his gold come the end. And as Yeah, if that Shawn Michaels was that guy back in, even though he had uh, <laughs> some definite backstage heat with some other wrestlers. Shawn Michaels, he he was that guy, bro. The Heartbreak Kid, he was he was... He was the main event player especially well he was rising to the main event player but they knew who they wanted to be the be the guy to to, to lead the company it was sean bro it wasn't bad enough. at least around that seemingly time. having lost interest in the idea of tatanka's undefeated streak vince mcmahon would book him to lose it in the most unceremonious fashion possible from there when on the October 30th, 1993 episode of Superstars, he'd get pinned clean in the middle of the ring by Ludwig Borga, proving that not all streaks are great and that mm -hmm. even if someone keeps winning, it won't necessarily make them a main eventer. True. But of course, it's not just individual wrestlers who can go on undefeated streaks as, just a couple of years later, WCW would start their own run of victories when, for 83 weeks in a row, they yep. dominate the Monday Night Wars. Here, though, it wasn't pinfalls they were picking up, it was but ratings. ratings wins instead, as between June of 1996 and April of 1998, every Monday night, Eric Bischoff and his roster of stars would prove more popular with TV viewers than anything WWF was doing. Yep. And part of the reason for this was that, while Vince McMahon was still struggling to move away from the cartoon era of wrestlers with jobs, WCW were riding high with the yeah. groundbreaking NWO story. NWO just took them to new heights. NWO was was the thing that was really hurting WWE. It wasn't until they started really pushing like the, the attitude side of wrestling when they started really getting into that bag because WCW was already in that bag. When they started getting away from the the hokey characters and the more aggressive trash talking characters, and they got into that bag, that's when WWE started to really creep up, you know, within the ratings line that saw a new level of reality be brought to the show as Hulk Hogan, Scott Hall, and Kevin Nash staged a hostile invasion of the company. Yep. On top of that, there was also the intrigue of Sting, Sting, someone who had painted his face white and taken to sitting in the rafters with a baseball bat every week, all while there was simultaneously excellent cruiserweight action on display from the likes of Rey Mysterio, and Chris Eddie. Jericho, and Eddie Guerrero. Peace, Eddie. Come the dawning of the Attitude Era following WrestleMania 14, however, the 83-week run of victories would finally come to an end when WWF picked up a win after teasing a Steve Austin versus Vince McMahon match. And that... That was the fuel right there. Everything else, the attitude, era that they were trying to cultivate, it was, you know, it was, it was rolling. But they needed something. WCW had the NWO. They had Sting. Those were, like, one of the most popular things for that company. This, 
Austin, Vince McMahon, that feud sent them to the moon. Because everybody at one point back in the day, you st- a lot of people didn't like their bosses, you know? So they could, could they could relate to Stone Cold, and it worked. It worked, bro. Match on the April 13th, 1998 episode of Raw. And after that, it would be a gradual decline for Eric Bischoff's show, as with the NWO angle growing stale and mm-hmm. stars like Austin and The Rock becoming mainstream names over yep. on the other channel, WCW would end up going out of business just three years later, eventually being bought out by Vince McMahon himself in the greatest irony of all. Yeah. But even if it didn't end well, they can still hold claim to being the only company to ever defeat main roster WWE for an extended period of time. This is true. And while this represents a high point in the history of wrestling streaks, it should be noted that not all streaks are winning ones. No, in fact, occasionally, oh, some ones. poor performer will have the unfortunate duty of going through the least desired of all storylines, the losing streak. And in recent years, perhaps no one had a more memorable losing streak than perennial jobber to the stars, Kurt Hawkins. Mm-hmm. But what some may find surprising about this one is that it almost never happened at all. In fact, Hawkins has since gone on to discuss in interviews that, early on in his legendary losing streak, one of the show's writers had pitched for him to beat Heath Slater on an episode of Main Event. Realizing there was potential in the idea of a record-breaking string of losses, however, he was able to get this finish changed, as from there, he would go on for a full three years between 2016 wow. and 2019 without picking up a single win. Damn. And during this time, while he was eating know that. for everyone and anyone on the roster, Kurt would start playing up to this part of his gimmick, with his merchandise even starting to show off the fact that, by June of 2018, he was 0-200. Wow, After that, the didn't losses know would that. continue to pile up, with fans now wondering when this legendary streak would come to an end. And as it happened, WWE were saving this for the biggest stage possible, as at WrestleMania 35 on April 7, 2019, Hawkins would team up with his real-life friend Zack Ryder to challenge the revival for the Raw Tag Team titles. And on that night, after 269 straight losses, the underdog was able to finally overcome when he pinned Scott Dawson to score the win, not only ending his streak, but making him a tag team champion too. That's crazy. Didn't of course, even realize Kurt that. Hawkins is not the only figure who's undergone a lengthy losing streak in WWE over the years though, as way back in the Attitude Era, while the big stars were racking up wins week after week, down on the lower card, a certain someone was doing jobs on the regular... And that was Gilbert. Gilbert? Oh, but my God. There's a God. reason for this one. Is being asked to play a parody of what Goldberg was doing over on the other channel, Dwayne Gill would flip the script on that figure's iconic win streak and instead undergo a series of losses. Oh, I forgot the about The first of these this coming upon thing, his bro. reintroduction to the company at the Survivor Series 1998 Deadly Games thing, Tournament. Bro. And after being Gilbert. beaten by Mankind that night, Gill would have a brief run of good luck when he defeated Christian to win the light heavyweight title. Upon losing this a few weeks later, though, it would be off to the races as Gil- once he joined up with the job squad, Gilbert, of that was a thing. Made up of Al Snow, oh. Too Cold Scorpio, and Bob Holly, Gilbert would rack up loss after loss after loss. And of course, while he was doing this, he would continue to mock Goldberg through his entrance and mannerisms, with him getting sparklers instead of fireworks at the runway <laughs> whenever he first came down to the ring, and even a new catchphrase for himself: "Who's first? But as with all good things, this streak would eventually have to come to an end too. And while he was originally planned to go 0 in 173, mirroring Goldberg's win streak, in the end, Dwayne Gill would score a win over Goldust on the February 8th, 1999 this was a episode thing, of y'all. Raw. This, oh there, my breaking God. his string of bad luck, as after that, he'd go on a 15-month-long run as light heavyweight champion when he retained the title in 2000. <laughs> and that then brings us to the end of our list, because with all the great streaks covered, there really is nowhere else to go now. Well, you know, we suppose there is one more we could look at, uh, perhaps the greatest streak in all of wrestling yeah, history. Yeah, I was about fact. to say, yeah, man. Yes, while others have gone on win streaks that have lasted for months and even years, no one has been able to go on the near quarter century series yep. of victories that The Undertaker had at WrestleMania. It's become so synonymous with him by now that, if you only know one thing about the dead man, it's probably the fact that he went undefeated at the Showcase of the Immortals for so long. Yep. But it wasn't always planned that way, of course. No, it wasn't. During the first decade or so, it was pure coincidence that he never lost. Mm -hmm. That's right. While his early wins over the likes of Jimmy Superfly Snuka, Jake the Snake Roberts, and King Kong Bundy may have seemed inevitable, there were plenty of other opponents who could have easily gotten the better of him during this period. 
Take Diesel at WrestleMania 12, for example. With the rumors since being that Kevin Nash was actually booked to win this one originally, as he had a WWE title match with Shawn Michaels to build up to the following month. Of course, when he handed in his notice to leave WWF, however, that, if you believe what you read, led to a last-minute change of plans, saving the streak before it could even become a thing. Mm. And it's not just there it could have ended either. At WrestleMania 14, oh, yeah, for example, Kane. it wouldn't have been a stretch to imagine Kane getting the big win in round one of their feud, establishing him as even more of a monster heel. On top of that, at WrestleMania 9, Giant Gonzalez near enough Gonzalez. beat The Undertaker when he knocked him out with a chloroform-soaked rag. Just a little tweak to this finish then, especially since they were going to return to it at that year's SummerSlam, and things could have easily ended early. Luckily, none of this happened though, and instead, by WrestleMania 21 in 2005, the streak was formally being marketed as yep. a thing. After that, every year, the Phenom would face a new challenger, usually in the form of some young up-and-comer, as at various points, Randy Orton, Edge, yep. and Batista all staked their claims to being the failed. one to beat him. Storyline In the end, though, none of them could, and neither could Shawn Michaels and Triple H as it happened, even despite getting two opportunities each in a four-year-long mini-arc between 2009 and 2012, mm -hmm. which led to some of the greatest wrestling matches of all time. Some of the best matches of in all fact, time. In fact, the first match of these four, The Undertaker's showdown with Shawn Michaels at WrestleMania, WrestleMania 25, 25. Oh. is still considered by many to this day to be the single greatest wrestling match of all time. It is. I get goosebumps just thinking about that match. It, it just makes it so much better. It was in my home, home city, hometown. Watching that live, I, I for the first time, I, 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 I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about it. I may go watch the match after this. It is a five star classic. They told a fantastic story. The WrestleMania 26 match was good. It's not as good as the first one. Or the WrestleMania 25 match, but God damn. From the what was happening in the ring to JR on commentary, I, there were so many times I'm like, bro, Sean is going to end the streak. That was the first person I actually thought they're going to actually end the streak here. The way they were building it up, they, they're going to, they're going to, they're going to do something crazy here. And it was just, it was fantastic. You have not seen that match. I don't know what to, I don't know what to tell you. Go watch the goddamn match. <laughs> so with high expectations to meet going forward, then the streak would continue to give us show stealers in the years that followed as CM Punk became the latest man to challenge the dead man at WrestleMania 29. And as it happened, he would be the last person to fall during this career defining run mm -hmm. as the year after that at WrestleMania 30, Brock yep. Lesnar would shock the world when he pinned The Undertaker clean in the middle of the ring in a moment that has since been described as WWE's Red Wedding, an event so unexpected it left the 75,000 or so people in attendance in stunned silence. Yep. But it's fitting that it would get this reaction when it ended because, as we've said before, The Undertaker's WrestleMania streak will probably go down in history as the greatest streak of all time. Yeah, but it'll probably Not never that the be others on this list are any slouch, though, as between them, they each prove that if you really want to get people invested in something in wrestling, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. All That's... you have to do is have someone win or lose until people start caring. Yep. Well, guys, what did you think of the video? Let us know in the comments below. This is this is true, man. And obviously, I guess it makes sense not to have Roman Reigns streak on there because it's still going. So, that you know, it, it hasn't ended yet. But uh, I can see Roman Reigns at one point being on this list, man. He, Whether you like it or not, some people think the streak is kind of, it's gotten stale now. Understandably so. I still think this this what they've done with him and his character change this streak only works because he's a heel it does not work if he's a face it they, it doesn't because he's a heel it works and hopefully you know i think this probably may be his last year holding the title at least the universal championship he'll probably lose both um but um it's, it's been enjoyable for me, for the most part. It's had its low points, but for the most part, it's made Roman Reigns a household name more ever than before now. Definitely, it's made him more of a household name, and, and people know 
they associate themselves. WWE Roman Reigns. He's the longest reigning Universal Champion. Longest reigning champion in the modern era. I've seen the John Cena's. I've seen the CM Punk's. I didn't think we'd ever get anything this long wise. Like we didn't. I wouldn't think we would get a a championship reign this long for a long time. And then they did it with Roman Reigns once he turned heel. And I'm okay with it. Everyone has their opinions, but I, I think it's it hasn't been. It's been more of an upside than a downside. The only problem is. WWE hasn't really built up too many other stars which they should have been trying to do in situations when it's time for him to lose you gotta have somebody else to take that spot and that's WWE's fault but comment down below let me know what's your favorite wrestling streak of all time if I had to think my favorite one oh they could have put Walter on the list too Walter definitely deserves to be on the list uh, and Pete Dunn, not Butch. Ah, oh, that's a tough one, man. And that is a real tough one. Goldberg is definitely should be up there. But if I have to really, really choose, I'm going to go to Undertaker streak. Because, like I said at the beginning of this video, it gave another match main event level type hype. Because the Undertaker would, at some point would only come around once a year to promote whoever he's going to face against. And you wanted to see how, like, who was going to face him and if he was going to actually lose this year. And they would usually put on some pretty good matches, man. So that's why I would say the Undertaker streak is something for me I always look forward to. And I always was like, yo, you know what I'm saying? I don't, I'm not sure how it's going to play out, but I'm very interested. So comment down below. Let me know your favorite wrestling streaks, uh, wrestling streak of all time. Appreciate all love and support on the channel. Road to 90K. Appreciate y'all keeping with me. See y'all next one. Peace.